Hey everyone, I'm Tom from Morton's on the Move and we are in the middle of a solar installation on our RV. A big part to the solar installation is the battery of course and the thing I have sitting in front of me here is the battery that we're going to be using to power our RV. We're about to install this in its permanent location where you're not going to be able to see it so I wanted to take some time to talk about this battery in particular, why we chose it and talk about it a little bit why you can still see it. So what I have here is a battery out of a Tesla Model S electric car. The Model S electric car has 16 of these modules hidden underneath the car that actually provide the power for it to drive. This came out of a car that had an 85,000 watt hour pack installed in it. This pack alone is about 5.2, 5.3 kilowatt hour pack. We got this out of a wrecked Tesla Model S. Uh, the car was damaged beyond repair, but the battery was still in fine condition. The car had less than 20,000 miles on it, and while it's about two years old, it didn't see a whole lot in the way of cycling or use. This battery was designed to drive a vehicle, but we're going to use it in our RV. So why would I want to take a used battery out of a wrecked car to use in my RV? Well, there's actually a lot of reasons. So before we get into some of the other reasons, let's talk a little bit about lithium ion packs versus conventional batteries that you'd find in an RV. First of all, lithium ion batteries have a very high watt density, which means that per the weight of the battery, they are incredibly powerful. The Tesla batteries are some of the highest watt density batteries that you can find on the market right now. They're around 208 watt hours per kilogram of weight, which if you compare that to a standard lead acid battery, it's more around 20 to 25 watt hours per kilogram. That means this thing is so, so, so much lighter for the weight that we're actually going to be carrying in the RV. And weight is critical to actually try to keep your weight down in RVs. Lithium ions also have a lot of benefits over traditional lead acid batteries like they don't have a memory effect meaning you can drain these a lot longer you can get a lot more capacity out of this battery than you would out of a similarly sized lead acid battery without damaging the battery itself lithium ion batteries also have very little self discharge only one two percent per month whereas lead acid batteries will self discharge about 20 percent or more per month if they're just sitting in cycle applications lithium ion batteries well exceed that of a lead acid counterpart as well. A battery like this should see around 5,000 useful cycles, whereas even in the best lead acid batteries, you're only going to see around 2,000 or less cycles. So all those things come together to make this really fit well for what we're trying to do. But there are some disadvantages to lithium ion batteries as well. First of all, lithium ion batteries are incredibly temperature sensitive. This battery cannot go below freezing and I can use it, but you can not charge it. If you charge it, you will destroy this battery. Also, while you can discharge them all the way down to their rated capacity safely, if you go beyond that, like in a lead acid battery, if you drew it down to practically nothing, you could recharge the battery. If we tried to recharge the battery after we drew it down to zero volts, it would be completely destroyed. Lastly, if something goes wrong, especially with the charging cycles or if the battery itself is damaged, they can potentially be a pretty big fire hazard. They create their own oxygen and can create an incredibly hot fire that is almost impossible to put out. Not to say that lead acid batteries can't do that either. We had some that almost caught fire on us a couple years ago. Even with all those cons, with some precautions and some management systems, a battery like this can still be very safe. So I'll tell you the truth, I'm really excited about trying out this battery. I was super excited to get my hands on one of these and I'd been thinking about using a battery out of an EV car for quite some time. Electric cars use these big lithium ion batteries so they can get that extended range. And when they get in an accident, a lot of times those batteries are still in really great condition and you can get them pretty inexpensive in comparison to buying a brand new lithium ion battery. One of the biggest issues with lithium ion technology right now is that they are so expensive to buy new. However, buying them like this, they are even less expensive a lot of times than their lead acid counterpart. Other batteries I was considering to use were batteries out of a Chevy Volt and also batteries out of a Nissan Leaf car. We decided on the Tesla battery, well, because, I mean, come on, it's a Tesla and we wanted to say that our RV was Tesla powered. 
Well, not exactly, but the Tesla battery has a lot of advantages that work well for an RV situation as well. This is a 24 volt battery. Chevy Volt batteries run 48 volts and the Nissan Leaf batteries, you can configure them however you want, but you pretty much have to reconfigure the cells and put them together yourself. Whereas this is a nice, compact, super simple, ready to go battery. This battery weighs about 55 pounds and packs a punch of about 5.2, 5.3 kilowatt hours. We're going to use about 80% of the energy out of this battery. And if you were to compare that to a standard 50% draw that you'd safely use out of a lead acid system, the same lead acid system would weigh four to 500 pounds. This battery measures about 27 inches long, about 11 and a half inches wide, and only about three and a half inches thick. It's composed of 444 individual cells. They look kind of like double A batteries, except they're a little bit bigger. The battery cells are packed inside these metal plates that you can see on the top and the cells themselves are really shiny and I mean it looks really cool. If I didn't have to protect it and hide it somehow I would definitely leave it more exposed so you could see it because I mean maybe I'm a nerd but come on it looks really cool. The cells are arranged with 74 cells in parallel to each other and six of those cells are in series to give it a nominal voltage of around 21.6 volts. 21.6 volts is about half charged capacity. The fully charged capacity can go up to about 25.2 volts and it can go all the way down to about 18 volts is completely dead. Looking at the battery the physical layout is really interesting. They use these metal plates that that actually connect the cells together in parallel. And they're in these interesting angles. And on both sides of the battery, they have these strange shapes. And I'm guessing that's so that they can get this as small of a package as possible. But I'm not 100% sure as to the design why they use those plates like that. The batteries are connected to each one of these funky shaped plates by little tiny wires. And if you look really close, you can see the wires on each individual battery. That really tiny wire carries the amount of current that that cell can put out and not a whole lot more. If for some reason something went wrong with one particular cell, that wire acts as a fuse and will burn up and disconnect that cell from the rest of the pack. While that might seem potentially detrimental to the entire pack, it really isn't because the pack has so many cells in it, it's barely gonna affect the performance of the pack. One of the benefits of the pack is that it has so many cells that it keeps itself relatively well balanced, which means what the voltage is between each individual cell. The actual power terminals that you connect to on this battery are on this end. They're protected by these little rubber caps here and they have big M8 bolts that you just unscrew and you can connect your power cables directly to it. In the car they had a power channel along the edge that they just had these little short cables that hopped onto the battery here. When they come out of the car they have an electronic board on this end and that is the BMS battery balancing board. I had that removed because I wasn't going to actually be able to use that battery board but what that board did is it monitored the cells inside here to make sure that they were within voltage specifications. The battery board also monitored the temperature at the outputs of the batteries to make sure that it was operating within proper temperature limits. Luckily those leads that are part of the battery are still easily intact and I just connected a simple battery monitoring system. What I'm using is a Tenergy 5-in-1 cell meter that can read the voltage of the battery, read the voltage of each individual cell, and tell me if anything is out of spec or alignment. I've got this thing set to alarm if any of those voltages go out of range inside the battery. Also at this end are where the temperature probes that actually monitor the battery temperature are located and used to plug into the BMS. I could go ahead and reuse these temperature probes, but I'm going to be adding my own later. If we take a look at the other end of the battery, you'll see these two prongs sticking out. And what these are is they're actually coolant hoses. When it was installed in the car, the car actually provided heating and cooling to these batteries to keep them within that temperature range we talked about earlier via a fluid. Hoses connect up to these and there are flat copper tubes located inside the battery that weave their way in between each and every single cell in this battery. That weaving motion allows that copper tube to make as much contact as it possibly can with each individual cell. And if the car determined the battery was too cold, it would heat the fluid and it would warm up the entire battery. If it determined it was too warm, it would cool the 
the fluid and take the heat out of the battery. Now this battery is designed to put out over 1000 amps at full load. And when it's putting out that kind of current, it needs to have cooling. It does not need cooling if it puts out less than one C of its capacity, which is around 250 amps. Because of that, we're not gonna be using the cooling circuit in the battery, but we do need to consider heating. So we're probably gonna use some sort of a heating pad or blanket so that if we find ourselves in freezing temperatures, we can still keep the battery warm. The meter is registering the voltage off the cells just like the BMS board used to do. And as you can see here in the battery, there are actually wires that run up and make contact with each one of the individual plates in this battery. These plates are all at different voltage levels as the cells are in series or parallel with them, and the meter can check the voltage of each one of those cells. The chemistry of this battery is a lithium nickel cobalt manganese aluminum oxide battery. This is a chemistry that Tesla has come up with to help provide that incredible watt density, but also make the battery relatively safe. The aluminum oxide added to the battery really helps prevent thermal runaway conditions and keeps the cells relatively stable. I personally feel like this battery is relatively safe on its own. Overcharging or undercharging the battery could put it into an unsafe condition, but um, if you go over to the What's Inside channel, they actually chopped open one of these batteries, cut open a whole bunch of the cells, and they never saw it get hot or explode or anything like that. And that kind of puts my mind at ease. So that's a bit about the pack, but how how are we actually going to use this in our RV? Well, this battery is not a drop-in solution by any means to a standard lead acid system. This is a 24 volt battery, but even if you were to put it into a 24 volt lead acid system and turn on your chargers, this battery probably would explode and catch fire. Charging characteristics for lithium ions are very different from lead acid, and you cannot use the same charging curves and parameters for these batteries. So first of all, we're going to be using a 24 volt system in our RV going forward. We have a 24 volt inverter already, and we're going to be using a 24 to 12 volt converter to power our standard RV lights and components inside the RV that are already 12 volts. So this battery is primarily going to be charged by our solar system. Because it has such strict voltage charging requirements, we got a charge controller that we can strictly set the voltage that we want it to charge up to and no higher. The controller we're using is a Victron Energy MPPT charge controller and you can easily, via a Bluetooth app, go in and change the voltages to make it exactly what you want it to charge the battery to. Our inverter is also a charger, so if we're plugged into an AC source and we want to charge the battery again, it can actually provide the charge but we have full control over the charge characteristics of that as well. Basically, this battery can never be charged past about 25.2 volts. Ideally, probably 25 is about the maximum charge you ever want to bring this battery up to. If you go beyond that, you can risk damaging the cells or decreasing the battery's life significantly. Because that's such a risk, we're actually going to be using a battery disconnect relay and a over and under voltage protection relay to shut the battery off if the voltage goes too high or too low, so we keep it in that nice middle range. Again, with no memory effect on these batteries, you don't ever have to charge this all the way up or ever decrease it all the way. If you stay in the middle of the battery usage, the battery is going to last the longest. With that battery disconnection system, I'm also going to be using a temperature sensor that we're going to install in the battery. That's gonna monitor the temperature and make sure the battery doesn't get too hot or too cold. And if it does, it's gonna disconnect it completely from the RV. These systems that we're gonna be installing are typically considered a battery management system or a BMS. The car's BMS was built right into it and it also had a head BMS that looked at all the packs in the car. BMS systems are involved in almost every single lithium ion battery out there because they have to protect the battery. The electric cars have it, your phone has one, even the camera we're filming this on has some sort of banner battery battery management system to make sure that the battery is staying within its limits. So we're going to be maintaining the charge voltage on this battery to a safe level. We're also going to be monitoring its temperature to a safe level. And lastly, we're going to be monitoring each individual cell voltage with this little meter here. All batteries that have individual cells, even your lead acid batteries, need to have the cells balanced every so often. In lead acid batteries, that's typically called equalizing, but in a lithium ion battery, it's usually just called cell balancing. I can switch through modes on this to read the maximum and minimum between cells. And right now it's sitting around 
0.017.018 volts difference between some of the cells in the batteries. That is a very acceptable, well-balanced battery. But over time, sometimes these cells can get a little bit out of balance due to different internal resistances that exist through the pack. Every so often, the cell needs to be balanced, and a battery management system that's built into a pack should do that automatically. In our case, we're going to have to do that manually, so every couple weeks or so, I'll probably come out, check the balance, and this this little unit here can actually balance this pack using these wires that are connected to each individual cell. We didn't use the BMS that was built in because it had Tesla proprietary software on it and it really was just an exposed circuit board. I would have had to develop a whole bunch of code and another computer to be able to use it. So it's a lot easier to just add a different BMS at a later date. So what about how long this battery might last? Well, Tesla warrants the 85 kilowatt battery for eight years in their cars with unlimited mileage. Based on Tesla driving data and some stats Tesla has pulled together, they're now estimating that these batteries might last upwards of 20 years in the cars. We're gonna be cycling this battery a whole lot more, but we're hoping to get a couple thousand good cycles out of it and get upwards of 10 years battery life out of it in our RV. Over time, lithium ions do degrade Grade, so we'll see how the performance holds up, but we're definitely excited to see better longevity out of this than our lead acids in the past that have lasted upwards of two years max. This battery does not come with any instruction manual because we've kind of hacked a Tesla car to be able to use it. That being said, if you're not comfortable with electronics or don't understand lithium ion batteries quite yet, you wanna at least know what needs to be used for a BMS system to keep the battery safe before attempting to use a battery out of a car like this. You can go on eBay and find people selling these batteries from junkyards and such. I got this particular battery from a company in North Carolina called HSR Motors. The owner of that company, Jason Hughes, has been taking apart Teslas for pretty much as long as they've been on the road, and he really knows his stuff. So if you want a good pack, I would definitely recommend HSR Motors to get one from. Before they sell you a pack, they test the packs to make sure they're all good. They also ship them very carefully if you're gonna have it shipped, and they always come out of low mileage cars. There have been a few other people that have used Tesla batteries in their RV that we know of. Uh, people have been using these in all kinds of other things Things as well though so we're kind of in uncharted territory here but we will definitely keep you updated as to how this battery is performing we're really excited to be installing this in our RV and trying it out when we were talking about putting our solar system in we sort of joked around that hey maybe we should put a Tesla battery in our RV but here now I actually have one sitting in front of me and I'm gonna try it so we're definitely excited to see what happens and we'll keep you guys posted on how it's going little disclaimer I am NOT a Tesla battery expert. I will do my best to answer any questions if you have them, so leave them in the comments below. And definitely be sure to check out some of our other videos. We've got some other technical videos about the solar system out there. Thanks for watching. I'm Tom. We'll see you next time.